Uh, just taking a look at the overall sentiment that we've been seeing, we had the ISM services number coming in better than expected, ADP numbers adding 42,000 jobs to the private payroll number and of course non-farm payrolls being key uh, in terms of what we'll be seeing in tomorrow's session. Uh, we are starting to see positivity filter through. Give us a sense of what you've been seeing in terms of volumes, uh, given the fact that the Dow Jones posted very really light volumes in yesterday's session. Yeah, even in the domestic market also very light volume so far. I think what we're really looking for is direction from the international markets. Um, on our side also by the lunchtime bell, less than 2 billion rand having gone through the market so far today. Um, in the Far East this morning, very, very good volumes, um, but, but a very um, strong and positive sentiment. I think the only exception to that rule has been China, where the, the news out that they were going to be looking at some stress testing on the banks to look for um, the event of a 60% pullback on um, house prices or real estate prices in China. Um, that certainly put some nervousness into the market. And so China really was the only one that was slightly negative this morning. Other than that, um, a positive day, but very light volumes and really looking for direction from the international markets. Narina, looking at the China story, we had Rio Tinto uh, out with some results uh, in today's session. We, we saw that the miner reported a record first half profit, in fact, more than double than a year earlier metal prices recovering and it's all about the Chinese demand story that is playing out. Uh, give us a sense in terms of what you think is going to play out when it comes to China because it's been a trend that has been emerging this whole year so far whether China is going to start pulling back on stimulus, how much it's going to pull back and what kind of growth rates we'll be seeing from that uh, big economy. I think it remains a bit of a catch-22 situation for the Chinese authorities in the sense that they can't really afford to take the foot off that um, uh, petrol um, too much. So yes, we continuously get news out of very strong growth and then the authorities trying to pull back on that growth a little bit. It eases somewhat, but the minute they sort of try and, and uh, um, pull back again, it just refills again and it keeps going. Mm -hmm. So the Rio story, yes, it confirms what we see at Zaro, the same story today, higher demand globally stronger commodity prices. Um, of course, Rio's numbers are not only about um, higher commodity prices, but also disinvestment from two, two fairly major projects. And that boosted their cash reserves for about $3.6 billion. So um, some fairly big numbers coming through there from, from Rio Tinto. But to answer your, your story on China, I think this is a story that will be with us for the foreseeable future. That does not mean that we will not have periods um, of interim periods of weakness or, or soft in commodity prices and, and growth. But I think this is a secular story that will remain with us for the foreseeable future. And, and it's something that we all just learn to live with. Um, and we try and negotiate the, the shorter periods of instability when they do come along. Commodity prices have requ uh, recovered quite extensively over the past while. And Xara came out with a trading update this morning saying that headline earnings per share could be uh, as high as 73% higher. So we are starting to see this filtering through into the resource companies as well, Narina. Uh, your sense of what we'll be seeing uh, from the resource companies. Of course, Goldfields also came out with results this morning. Uh, fourth quarter uh, results uh, not uh, hitting expectations, but still better than the previous half. Yes, I think in, in the terms of Exaro, very, very good performance from Exaro, um, certainly based on, on the very strong performance from coal prices and, and coal demand in particular. Um, they, they mentioned the joint venture that they have with the Anglo-American subsidiary, Anglo Coal, certainly working very, very well for Exaro. In the case of Goldfields, a very, very strong performance from them for the fourth quarter. Bear in mind that on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, this was relative to the third quarter ending March that was um, really plagued by a lot of work stoppages due to safety concerns. This they've been able to sort out very, very well and um, their Ghanaian operations in particular is firing on all cylinders. The Takwa mine in, in Ghana has um, produced record production for them um, and this has certainly stood them in very good stead. We are very, very keen on gold fields. We believe that they've got their production issues sorted out um, and that's our preferred pick in this in this sector and we would certainly be a buyer of gold fields at current levels. Narina, turning our attention now to the financial sector, looking at Liberty returning to a profit and apps also out with results this morning headline earnings up 1% and headline earnings per share down 4% uh, what is your view about the financial sector at this point in time given the fact that many uh, have been relatively vocal about another interest rate cut to try and spur consumer spending and also to see those bad debts coming uh, under uh, pressure that we haven't seen coming under pressure for some time now perhaps some stability coming to the fore there 
We've had very good guidance from the financial sector in terms of what to expect of the current earnings season and it's certainly been um, guidance to expect relatively weak results and that's what we've been seeing coming out of the financial sector so far. So in terms of guidance the results have been in line with these expectations and what it does confirm to us is that the South African consumer is still in dire straits. Um, the bad debt positions are not being unwound as fast as, as many would have liked to have seen um, at this stage. If we look at APSA for example, headline earnings per share slightly down, about 3% down, um, so as to be expected. I think what was positive for us in those results is that part of the reason for that weak number was a higher tax charge than, than in the comparative period, 27% versus 24%, and that's certainly better rather than a, a weaker operating results. But there is also two other aspects, very, very poor non-interest revenue growth of only 2% and a higher cost charge, particularly from APSA Capital coming through in terms of IT spend as well as in terms of um, um, employee costs and so on. So certainly some aspects that are not that great, but as I say, it was in line with, with guidance. When we look at, at Liberty today, um, not a bad set of res results exactly as, as expected. I think the only two um, uh, sort of disappointing numbers there for us is that the growth in, in um, margin certainly was, was very disappointing um, and that the, the revenue growth has not been what we were hoping for at this stage of the of the cycle.